Hello everyone, welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. And as usual, before we uh, begin our study, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we open your Word day by day, knowing that you desire to teach us from it, and that you want us to know about you and your Son Jesus and your ways. And so today, Lord, we ask by your Holy Spirit that you will open our hearts and minds and our eyes and our ears to be able to receive from you the truths that you want us to know. And Lord, then by your Holy Spirit, may we be empowered to live according to those ways. And we'll be careful to give you the thanks for all these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson is Miracles by the Spirit. It's taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 3, and verse 5. Paul the Apostle has made appeal after appeal for the church members in Galatia to remember the source of their salvation. It was not by works that they were saved, but rather by faith that they received the grace of God. In chapter 3 and verse 5 of the book of Galatians, Paul the Apostle continues his effort to convince them by using miracles and their sources as an example of the way God has demonstrated his grace. He wrote, He therefore that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles among you, does he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Paul begins his question with, He therefore that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles among you. The word ministers means supplies, presents, or furnishes, and has the idea of appealing to their memory to those who supply the Spirit to them in the first place. These ministers were miracle workers, not just around them, but also within them. Their lives were changed from the pagan practices, and though they were once far away from a relationship with God, because of these suppliers, they now enjoyed fellowship with him. Miracles are supernatural works, and there were among them those who did these works in their presence. The source of miracles is a power that is beyond human ability, and when miracles were done, the Galatians knew that something was happening that far exceeded what they naturally knew. Paul continues, does he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Paul desires to know their answer to the source of the Spirit and miracles. Did they think that miracles occurred by works of the law? Because someone keeps the law of God, does that mean that they will be able to do miracles? No, of course not. Miracle workers are just as flawed as the rest of us. It is by the grace of God that any miracle takes place and not the superior ability of any person. It is by God's grace that the Spirit is supplied. It's by God's grace that miracles occur. Those who supplied the Spirit and did miracles among the Galatians did so by the hearing of faith. They believed God's word by faith, and they believed God's work by faith, and miracles occurred because of it. Too often today, the ministry of the Spirit and miracles are attributed to the worthiness of the minister. Some people believe that a particular person is more holy than another, and therefore miracles flow through his or her life. God is the source and inspiration for the supplying of his gospel, and he is the presiding sovereign over whether miracles occur or not. It is by God's grace that the gospel is given. It's by God's grace that supernatural acts materialize. Paul makes the appeal to the Galatians to think about the source of their beliefs, and as he does, perhaps we shall think about ours as well. Next time, we will see Paul illustrate his point by using Abraham as an example. So read ahead and let us join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word. In Jesus' name.